in this problem, we have a uh, sphere here with a total charge of Q, and our goal is to find the, or the, the force that's acting on the northern hemisphere that's caused by the southern hemisphere. And the overall scheme that we're going to use to find this out, and I'll put over here, is that we're going to take the electric field that's inside the, um, uh, inside the sphere, and then we're going to find the force per unit volume, so that will give us for every in minuscule part of volume here, uh, the, how much force lies inside of it, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and just use that on the volume, the northern volume of the hemisphere, so we can just get the total force on the northern hemisphere itself. That's the overall scheme. And the way that we're gonna start off with getting the electric field is, of course, you probably guessed it right, uh, Gauss's law. So we'll do Gauss's law right here in integral form. Uh, Q over epsilon naught. Well, this is the Q enclosed. Well, our Q enclosed that we're going to have is actually, um, well, before I get there, uh, we'll just think about a Ga Gaussian surface. Uh, since we're going to find the electric field, in, since we want to find the force per unit volume, so the force inside the sphere, we want to find the electric field inside the sphere. And the way we do that is just having Gaussian surface where R is less than the radius of the, um, of the sphere itself, so we'll call that R. Let me go ahead and draw that um, Gaussian surface for reference, also known as a circle within a circle. But anyways, um, so that will mean our Q enclosed with this Gaussian surface is uh, actually just going to be a function of the um, the small the Gaussian radius R. Gaussian radius R which will be 4 thirds pi r cubed, because that's the volume of the Gaussian surface. So the ratio of the total charge to the total, um, to the Gaussian surface there. And of course, since we have symmetry right here, this will just end up turning in, into a multiplication, 4 pi r squared. And then we'll go ahead and make that substitution right there. Ends up being a bunch of, uh, let's see here, a bunch of other stuff. Let's see, uh, let's see here, 4 thirds. So we just uh, make the substitution for Q, so it just ends up being rho times all this stuff. So uh, to make that more explicit, rho times 4 thirds pi r cubed, epsilon naught. All right, we'll go ahead and cancel some stuff out, like this 4, this 4, this pi, this pi, these r's, this r right here. And all that's left is, of course, um, the electric field, and because this is physics, I can just tack on an R hat because I know the electric field is going to be pointing radially because um, I'm on question 40-something in chapter 2, and we can know these things by now. So, rho, uh, let's see here, we have R over uh, 3 epsilon naught. Go ahead and scoot this guy over, get a little bit more friendly. All right, so we have our electric field here. We're up to this point. Now we just need to find the force. And uh, if you recall, like a backwards Coulomb's law, um, that's just uh, electric, oops, sorry. The force is equal to some sort of charge times the electric field. So if you drop the charge in the electric field, it would exert a force that is proportional to the electric field. Um, and so the way that we're the, the next step that we're going to do that is going to go ahead and put the go ahead and divide both sides of this equation right here by uh, the volume because again we're trying to get to the force per unit volume. So if we divide the force per unit volume, we have Q epsilon naught or Q electric field divided by the volume, and we can just uh, change the way we have this. This charge here, this charge can also be expressed in terms of the density of it. So if we're talking about the electric field that's, uh, that's happening here inside the um, inside the sphere, and we wanted to figure out what was the force on some sort of part of the sphere, some sort of differential uh, piece of the sphere, that's a function of rho, we can just do the total charge Q of the sphere divided by the total volume and make that substitution. And then we, we get, finally get the force per unit volume is equal to, uh, let's see here, let's see, Q over Q, oh, sorry, we're doing, we're make a substitution for this, so we're just writing this stuff right here and there. So it's really just um, rho times volume over volume, so it's really just rho times the 
uh, electric field. So the force, where was I? Yeah, the force per unit volume is really just the density times the electric field. And luckily we have the electric field and we have the density. So we can just go ahead and start chugging away at that expression down here, where the force per unit volume is equal to, you guessed it, rho times everything right here, which is just rho. So we'll put a square r, r hat over three epsilon naught. All right, so far so good. We just got a little bit left. Um, so now we're just gonna try to find the, the force on the northern hemisphere. I'm gonna scoot down a little bit. And again, the way, we, since we have force per unit volume, all we need to do is just um, find the force uh, on a volume element on the northern hemisphere and then just integrate for all the um, volume elements on the northern hemisphere. So of course we gotta do an integral. It involves this thing right here too, but so I'll go ahead and scroll down. So the force, on just the northern part is equal to, like I just said, we just integrate over the, all the northern hemisphere, so I'll just put north there, of our <coughs> force per unit volume, which we have right here, so I'll go ahead and write that. Rho squared r r hat over three epsilon naught. I should just put a vector sign there because you know there's vectors that exist and then times uh, dv, so sort of differential volume element right there. So again, since we're just doing the, uh, the northern hemisphere, right, our integral, our volume integral is gonna look like a hemisphere. So that means we're gonna go from, we'll go ahead and put the r squared sign, because we're working spherical coordinates, dr, d theta, d phi, so Looking at the dr, we're going to integrate, of course, from 0 to r. And then uh, for the theta, we're actually only going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2 because, again, we're talking about a hemisphere, so we're only integrating from here down to here, right? So that's pi over 2. And then, of course, then we're going to do a full circle which for our phi, which will be 0 to 2 pi, all right? So far, so good. All right, and then we have our um, force per unit volume that we had. I want to go ahead and move that r hat out of the way here. Three epsilon naught. <clears throat> All right, not too bad of an integral, but one of the things that um, I want to note here that um, if we scroll back up, actually we don't really need to scroll back up, but um, just from symmetry, right? We know if this is the northern hemisphere. This is the southern, southern hemisphere. By symmetry, these things are just gonna be pushing away in these directions, right? So we know that the net force, again, by symmetry, is gonna be pointing in the up hat direction, which is also known as the, I guess, we can call it the z hat direction. So um, for, for the z hat direction, we're gonna have to make a, a little, um, I'll just draw a picture to make it a little, a little bit more clear. Right. Uh, if we have some sort of force that's pointing out this way, right, and um, this is this is theta right here. If we want to find the force only in this direction, the z hat direction, we know that of course there's a relationship cosine is equal to um, z hat over the hypotenuse. In this case, this is r hat over r hat, right. So we know that we can just make the substitution right here uh, and just take the cosine of everything so we can go ahead and get the um, get the z hat component. So we just got to throw a cosine in here. Cosine theta, and now we have a z hat right here. Now we can just go ahead and uh, start executing this derivative. So working first on the r squared value, or the, the, the dr here. We're gonna have a r to the third, because we have two r's, or sorry, three r's. I'll move all these constants out of the way. So we have rho squared over three epsilon naught. <coughs> this is our phi integral. This is our theta integral. And now our rho integral, or sorry, our r integral 
is executed. So integral of r to the third is r to the fourth over four, evaluated from zero to r, or r to zero, whatever. Um, pretty easy one. Scrolling up a little bit. So this ends up just being uh, big R to the fourth. So I'll put that out in front. Big R to the fourth over four. Uh, four times three is 12. Fact. Now we'll go ahead and work on our, um, the integral of uh, sine theta, cosine theta. And uh, thanks to the power of uh, integral tables and Wolfram. Again, I'm not sponsored by Wolfram. It's just an awesome tool. Yeah, it's equal to that integral right here, and we have a d phi sitting out here. All right, uh, go ahead and put that in using the uh, unit circle that I memorized in trigonometry way too long ago. Let's keep our integrals here. Uh, this will end up being c cosine squared, so that's negative uh, zero, <laughs> just because of the negative sign out here. So negative zero cosine squared of pi over two is zero, plus plus one half, because it's really um, minus a minus, so it makes it a plus cosine squared of zero is just one. We have our two that came down from here, and then we have d phi. This next integral right here is easy. The phi hat just ends up being um, 2 pi to the fourth. Let's see here now, this is, well, you know, we'll just go ahead and leave this so I can just do 1 half uh, times 2 pi. There we go. Nice and easy. Cancel out the twos. I forgot the z hat to the very end. I didn't mean to do orange, but we'll just leave it. All right, and so uh, that's what we got so far. That is, let me make it a little bit cleaner, 12 epsilon naught uh, pi right here into the z hat. And we don't forget our, <laughs> I dropped our rows. Holy cow, sorry. Row, row squared, row squared, row squared. Okay, this is now, as a reminder, the the force on the northern part, uh, but in terms of rho, right, in terms of the density, I mean, the problem asks us to get it in terms of um, some other stuff, Q and I think Q and R, actually just mainly Q, right, but that's easy. Uh, we know that we can, we know that rho squared is equal to just the charge over the volume, four thirds pi R cubed squared. Uh, math happens. Okay, so, oh my god, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so we'll go ahead and make this substitution for our rho squared down here. That's a big thing. So the sixth, and then everything else that we got, so we had r to the fourth pi 12 epsilon naught and z hat. All right, let's start canceling some things out. So this pi goes away. One of these pi's goes away. All r to the fourth goes away. This turns to an r to squared. Um, we'll factor out three from here. That's a four. And I think that's good. Let me go ahead and rewrite things in terms of, of course, our favorite constant. Yeah, the four pi and the epsilon naught right there leaves us the q squared over oh, 316 q squared over r squared z hat and uh pretty sure that's our answer right and it makes sense because we have something in the z hat direction we have a terrible circle but we know that the northern hemisphere is going to feel a, a an upward push or an opposite push from the southern hemisphere so the z hat seems to make sense and and I think that uh, matches the answer that uh, Griffith gave us.